Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, January 14th, 2020, regular selectmen's meeting. All the selectmen are here. There's the town manager, the town clerk, town assessor, town planner, and transfer station attendant. I never know what your official title is, Hokey, so well, dump the guy. The dump, the dump guy. It's Hokey, yeah. <laughs> He's in charge. Hokey, Hokey. Hokey's in charge. Is, uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is the approval of our December 17th minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. Second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Is, uh, brings us to our first public comment. Is public comment? <laughs> Step one up, Pokey. I'm Pokey from the transfer station. Uh, I'm just want to let everybody know that uh, they got to have their blue state uh, blue stickers on. I'm giving everybody a. Until the 31st of uh, this month, I've had to sign up for over a month. And uh, so, for the next month after that, you'll be turning people away. <laughs> I'll be making a list again <laughs> on the ones that don't have it and the right and all that. But uh, I still get complaints from out-of-state cars, and one was from Alaska, another one from Hawaii. Texas, California. Long way to bring and they're the all Navy or Coast Guard personnel out at yeah. Portsmouth, you know, the li living in town. In town. Yeah. Yeah. But I told them to come here and get a temporary sticker or anything. So yep. I got everything under control as far as out of state so far. <laughs> get more once I get the list made up. So uh, that's about all I had. Thank you. Just remind people about their stickers. Thank you. Recycling's up a lot. Yes, there is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, see, we see that in the financials. <laughs> but I, I guess the only thing they take out of it now is what, the cardboard? Yeah. Yeah, China is not taking a lot no. of the material now, so it's changed quite a bit. Oh, yes. We have one of them picked up once a week, the other one every couple of weeks. And usually we have two that week. <clears throat> Good. So. <clears throat> okay, you then. Go. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Hokey. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Hokey. Is um, we have no public hearing tonight. Is there reports of committees? Is um, you have anything to report on Vision, James? In Vision Berwick, we'll uh, we'll start meeting again uh, regularly pretty soon. Um, that the dates we posted on our calendar. There's all kinds of good stuff to do. Uh, with the comprehensive plan has about 430 responses, and we had a ton of short answer responses so over the past couple of weeks been analyzing the responses and categorizing them and it's been some pretty interesting results and that'll be coming out over the next few months and one of the survey was some of the survey questions uh, asked people their interest in volunteering and as a result of that question we got about seven new people who are going to meet with envision berwick on the 21st that was cool Awesome. Bringing new people in the fold, it, it's, a, it's a game changer for us. Um, year two for the concert series, we're um, coordinating uh, already underway and looking forward to build on the success of year one. Uh, are you planning on to have the, the two concerts again? Yep. Okay. Preliminary dates, looking at August 1st and then September 12th. So the second concert series last year, we kind of got the impression that it was kind of too close to that Labor Day. And then we did a poll online, would they rather have it earlier or the, the week after or the, the Saturday after Labor Day? And th that date won out, so. Try it out, yeah. see? see. <laughs> Thank Where'd you, you do your poll? On Facebook, or? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And BCTV. Hello. <laughs> so, um, preparing for the town book, doing budgets, and uh, trying to get ready. One of the things that I wanted to do is see if BCTV was on track, doing where, what we should be and what the people are liking. 
um, and trying to get that out there. So I did up some analytics on this and I grabbed from our YouTube site and then I grabbed from our on-demand site which is on our web page and then I also grabbed from our Facebook page to give us another set of analytics. Um, the top 10 videos on YouTube were the Joel Barnes procession um, and his announcement was second. Um, and then it went to your good man, Charlie Brown. And then Great Falls listening session was four and school board meetings, fire station, why we need to build, um, Berwick Public Library, the KKK in Maine, board of selectmen meeting on 226.19 a play at the high school, the Isle in the Moon, and an MSAD 60 board meeting in March. So we're obviously getting a good group of what people are, are watching. The interesting part for me on YouTube was where do people go? What playlists are they looking at? So the number one is Board of Selectmen, um, which I thought was really kind of cool. Berwick Public Library is our second listing and then the planning board, town departments, and school board meetings are the top five areas that people go to on our playlist for YouTube. Hmm. Our external traffic sources are Facebook, Google search, berwickmain.org, um, and Gmail were the top five sites for that. Our video on demand site, we're hitting um, countries such as UK, Canada, France, Philippines, Bermuda, Ukraine, and then we had one hit in India and Malaysia and Qatar. Um, not sure if those are kind of like a search T thing or what, but they were in there. Um, top five locations for us, Dover is number one. Please keep in mind that a lot of times when you click onto a video from Berwick, it may show up as Dover. Um, so while it says Dover, I'm thinking it's a lot more Berwick people, but it could be Dover as well. Berwick was number two. So we had 1,167 hits last year from Dover and 577 from Berwick. And then North Berwick, New York, and Boston really? were the top five. Um, the top five videos or on, on-demand stations that were watched via our site are the Channel 22, Great Falls Listening Session, um, Session 1 came in at the top. And then our government streaming site was the next one in line. And interestingly enough, Bill Vashon's interview came in <laughs> to the fifth top one. Um, that got shared with a lot of family members, I think. Uh, there are others on here. And I'm going to hand out lists to everyone so you can see them. Our Facebook followers, uh, 842 in the U.S. We also have Mexico, Bangladesh, Argentina, Peru, Lebanon, Philippines, France, Colombia, and Canada. We're all part of what we had in there. Cities and towns, again, the biggest one was Berwick, then Lebanon, North Berwick, Rochester, Dover, Summersworth, South Berwick, Sanford, York, and Wells. So we're, we're right in the area, but we're grabbing from everywhere. Um, top videos for our Facebook feed, Captain Joel Barnes service, which, which went out live and that got the highest votes. Um, Berwick suffers a great loss, that was our announcement. And then Great Falls Construction um, Listening Session 1, again, was one of the top videos that was watched. Demolition of Estabrook, <coughs> Moment of Silence, and Vision Berwick Concerts in the Square, which got a good hit. Um, Berwick Summersworth Parade, uh, New England Firefighters Training, Girl Scouts, and Berwick for a Lifetime were all on there as well. So what this tells me is we are definitely hitting what people are watching and they're liking it. Um, we'll probably do more. Of course, the, the meetings are a staple for us. Um, those will all be here, but whether we change what we're looking at doing, um, that may be part of what the analysis of all this information comes to. So I just wanted to give the uh, selectmen an update on that and tell them that we are working on seeing if we can change up things a little bit more as we go forward. What was going on at the selectmen's meeting you mentioned? That yeah, I, I don't know. Ask. I didn't look I at that. <laughs> but I'll I got an idea about a year ago. <laughs>
<laughs> Back in with, uh, in Lebanon. And this is for the well, entire year last, of last year. 2019. Last, last February. That, that, that was, no, that was two years ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. yeah. It wasn't last year. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, as we do up the budget, the committee had also asked me to look at hiring a part-time person to help me out. They seem to think when I go on vacations I shouldn't take the laptop with me. Can't quite get I don't that. either. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's something that we're looking at for this upcoming budget is whether we can afford to hire someone and what we'd have to move around to, to do that. So they could work maybe 15 hours a week, cover all of the meetings that I'm not covering and help with editing as well as taking over when I do go on vacation. So it would be programming the station and keeping up with the um, slideshow and that type of stuff. Any questions? No, but uh, you are right about Dover and Summer uh, and 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 Berwick. Uh, my my ISP reroutes to Dover. So when I when I look when I look at it on different sites, it'll be like you're from Dover, New Hampshire. I'm like, well, I, yeah, my close Dover. enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's kind of how I, I. There's no way for me to decipher exactly where they are, but I do know that mine has come up with. They, they've gotten better. It used to be stuff like but, I mean, going back 10, 15 years. It'd be like you're from Boston. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I yeah. do remember that. <laughs> Okay. All right. So. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have no department reports. No. Nope. <clears throat> we do have a presentation by James Bellissimo. And we're going to have to move. <laughs> I'm bring the screen down. Okay, so last month I attended the National Brownfield Conference in Los Angeles, California. Went with Rick, Rick Vandenberg. Uh, we were Noah, can you get the... Put yeah. that light. White buddies. There we go. Thank um, you. Okay. So also in, in attendance at the conference, uh, SMPDC was, was well represented. Um, Crediri, I met most of Crediri there who are our uh, prime tanning consultants. And throughout the three days, I met a handful of people from, from Maine and New England, just happened to run into them. So there were over 100 educational sessions to choose from over the three days. They also had mobile workshops, and I was lucky to attend one of them. And I'll get more into that a little, in a little bit. So the reason for this presentation tonight is to share some of my favorite success stories and some things that uh, we could implement in Berwick. So these examples come in all shapes and sizes, from an LA-sized landfill that was converted to a golf course and then a $60 million Porsche driving experience center to smaller communities than ours banding together to save a, a movie theater. Brownfields, they represent a convergence of many disciplines and they've proved to be a successful program. So for every $1 invested in the Brownfield program, it returns $17 in private investment. So for $2 million of investment, that's uh, about you know, $34 million, and um, I think that's reasonable on the horizon for, for our project. Um, you know, that's optimistic, but it's, it's well within the realm of possibility. So Berwick someday soon will be one of those workshops, um, and the next one is Oklahoma 2021, and we could be there sharing our success story. Um, something to keep in mind is that while Prime is the most prominent brownfield, it most likely isn't our only in Berwick. There are plenty of places in, in Berwick uh, that have hides that could qualify for more further funding. And Berwick has proved itself, along with Crediri, that we can, we can take, take the funds and, and turn into a successful project. So, like I said, I think if, if towns like cities can, can do this at the scale that they're doing, I think we could do just about anything in Berwick. So my first, my favorite example was actually the last talk I heard on, on Camden, New Jersey. So Camden was, uh, had the honor of being the FBI's most dangerous city in 2003, 2004, and 2009. And that's particularly interesting because I was in Camden, New Jersey in 2009, and it certainly felt like the most dangerous city to me. It was quite terrifying. So this is a picture of the Harrison Avenue landfill in Camden, New Jersey. It was, it's an uncapped, um, abandoned dump, and 
it was in between it's in between a river overlooking Philadelphia and on the other side were residential developments. So the community came together to form a vision, much like what we did in, in Berwick. And with that plan, they made a concentrated effort to redevelop the site. So right around that time, the Kroc Center, which is the McDonald's Foundation, donated $59 million to fund a community center in that very area. And that was matched by $9 million in local donations. So it, the community didn't stop there. Not only were they going to get a $70 million community center, they also wanted uh, a, a water park um, with river access, walking trails, baseball parks, food hubs. And, and keep in mind, this is on top of uh, a, a, land, a landfill that um, I think regulators would have told the community that's not possible. And they, they probably told them the time, like, no, no, maybe not. But uh, they kept pushing. And, they, and this was the beginning of it. You can see Philadelphia in the distance and in the foreground are those residential developments. And then you can, st you can start seeing the Croc Center here in, de in development and the site starting to take shape. And then the concepts for the development start to take shape, and that's the, the Croc Center, baseball fields, and the future plan for the, for the park. They even got a, a, fishing, a fishing pond to give you an idea of the, the remediation efforts that have taken, taken place. And that's what it looks like current day. Wow. So again, I mean, if they can do that, I mean, we can clean up some scraps and make something productive out of it. Oh, yeah. So Camden is starting to revitalize. Um, I was actually, I was blown away by this presentation because it's just like, Camden is actually turning itself around and it, it, was, it was probably the most uh, blighted area I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Carson, California, Los Angeles sized landfill turned into a golf course and then turned into a $60 million Porsche facility where you can look at, that's um, a hydroplaning simulation. They've got black ice that you can test, test cars on. Um, you can custom make your Porsche there. Um, they have, you can simulate driving in VR. And I, I was actually one of the only ones that like test drove in, in front of like 30 people and I ended up crashing it in, into the course. It's also, it's got a full restaurant. Uh, it's like a conference center. Um, again, it's, it, it has an ex extremely sophisticated uh, remediation system. And they, they figured it out. But they, there's, I can share the link more on that if you're interested. Uh, and I was hoping Santa was gonna bring me this car, but it didn't work <laughs> out this year. It's a fully electric Porsche. Things I didn't even know I liked cars that much until I saw that car. And this was uh, another place that I visited, part of that mobile workshop. Um, this is the home of the current Los Angeles Chargers, and it'll be home of um, an XFL team once the Chargers leave. It's also got uh, tennis courts um, and all kinds of stuff. they got soccer fields. It's, it's primarily um, uh, an MLS soccer place, and they have – food gardens and doing some real real creative stuff. And again, this is on top of a, of a brownfield. So ideas for Berwick, takeaways for Berwick. This is Deb Brown, and she was the first speaker that we saw at the conference, and she, she knocked it out of the park. Um, she highlighted 15 things that I wrote down that I think, that I think our town can do. Her thing is, idea friendly, and, and Berwick is idea friendly. Find your big idea, gather your crowd around co accomplishing that idea, you turn that crowd into a powerful network and build connections, and then you, and then the most important thing is you just take small steps to accomplish that idea. And the thing that I've learned here is that uh, incremental progress compounds over time. You move it along, you work with people, all of a sudden it becomes an actual thing that you can point to. 
This is one of the examples of uh, abandoned buildings, and I wish we kind of saw this sooner for Prime, but Prime's on the precipice of being redeveloped. But an idea of, of taking an abandoned building, putting some fake facades on there, and you can kind of start changing the environment drastically. And there's this broken windows theory where, you know, if there's a window broken in a town, it, it theoretically could lead to a reduced crime. So if you kind of change the facades on a building, you start changing the, I guess, the appearance and the, the feeling of the area, and you can start making it into a positive area. This is another example of, a, of what other would otherwise be boarded up. This door here is not really a door. It's just, it's all a sticker. <laughs> and then just the idea of, uh, every every area in the town, uh, downtown for us uh, is an art is an opportunity for for art. Um, another particularly interesting thing is this idea of repurposing shipping containers, and this is a maker's uh, market where you can, I mean, you can just see it's unbelievable. And I really love. I think something for Berwick that'd be really cool is you have these three stages of. A pop-up tent for a, if you have a, a business idea, you start off selling your product in a pop-up tent. You move into something like a shipping container, and then you can graduate into an actual storefront. So that's a good way to incubate local talent. Shipping containers are pretty expensive. Probably cheaper to go right to the storefront. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so big ideas for Berwick. Uh, these are just a, a short list of things that um, I've heard people in Berwick that ideas that we can implement. Outdoor movie night, we've ice skating rink, we've tried a couple of ways that didn't work, so third time's a charm. Our greenway, Great Falls Park, splash pad, there was an example of in the Brownfields presentation of a, a Brownfield and they, they developed a beautiful splash pad on it. Same thing with a downtown a dog park. Really cool ideas, just having spaces that serve multiple purposes. Um, creative reuse of prime artifacts, murals, sculptures, live work spaces, maker spaces, outdoor amphitheater, central gathering areas, gazebos, seating areas. What else? And I invite everybody to um, envision it because I, I think Berwick is, is really idea friendly. Um, and this is a, a picture of me sporting my uh, my Berwick swag in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> so, and the funny thing, fun, the funny thing, it, Rick and I kind of had this idea, and it's just uh, taking pictures of, of of representing Berwick instead of in in front of major landmarks. I actually got a buddy of mine that has the lawn chair uh, Sullivan Square shirt, and he was wearing it in um, um, Antarctica. So somehow Berwick has made it to Antarctica, which I found really, really cool. I'd be, I'd be happy to answer any, any questions or any, th any clarifying things or go back into the presentation. Do you have any ideas of how to get the $15 million from the Croc Foundation and things like that? <laughs> $15 million. I mean, I, I feel like that was very key to that rebuilding of that whole area was that, was that massive donation that's bigger than our entire town budget. So is there a way to get that? I mean, I think, I think the big, the starting point is the community coming together to kind of facilitate that opportunity. Um, I think the groundwork needed to be done to allow for the Croc Center to become a possibility. I think that, I mean, that's, that's really the... That, that's what I, that, that was my overall takeaway as well, is what you're saying is that if we can we can accomplish small goals that'll attract bigger fish. And I agree with that overall. I was just, I was just curious if there was, you know. I, I mean. yeah, I, I think, I think there's funding. I, Steve and I talk about it all the time. I think there's, <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of funding out there. It's just a, a matter of tailoring it to, to Berwick and finding the, the opportunity. Just to tell you about the return on investment, uh, what we would, receive and that number is very interesting because James and I visited Great Falls several weeks ago and he threw out a number of uh, ballpark mind you of 35 million in the first five years that he probably would be investing here so 34 million is not too far off <laughs> right. yeah. you know so it's it's coming nice. yeah thank you James right. that's awesome thank you how long were you there, James? 
What's that? How long were you there? I was there for three days. Uh, I was in LA for three days. Yeah. You didn't hang around a couple extra days later? We went to uh, San Francisco oh, yeah. right yeah. after. Yeah. For a couple of days. Yeah. Rick and I and a couple of members of Pretty Ray. I would have thought you'd go to Galaxy's Edge or something, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, James. <clears throat> Is that brings us to unfinished business. We have nothing listed. Is town manager's report? Uh, just a quick update. We were at our six month period for our budgets, and uh, at your first um, uh, budget meeting for the upcoming budget, you'll see. Uh, the, the percentages and where we are. Um, we're a little bit ahead of schedule on our revenue sharing. We budgeted more this year because of what the governor had put in place and looks like we're gonna probably uh, exceed that if we keep going at the rate we're doing compared to other years. So I think we're in a good position there. Excise tax is up at, again higher than what we had at this point last year. So uh, it seems people are still buying cars and spending money. Uh, Blue Sort Building, if you were out there today, they were in there. I think they were finishing the last floor, uh, sealing that up. Um, so that will be done, and I think we'll probably transfer that over to Mark uh, sometime in February, probably, get all the paperwork back from the state. So that's on track. Um, and Great Falls has expressed an interest in possibly buying that from him. So that's kind of encouraging as well. Didn't he already have like a tenant lined up or something? Or Excuse me? Did he, didn't he, he did have a tenant lined up, but, <laughs> and that person has been working with James, and um, he's kind of pulled away from that to work on other things because there's no guarantee that, uh, one, that Mark would sell it to him, two, that he can do what he wanted to do on that site. So he's, he's gone someplace else, which is not a, necessarily a bad thing. No. So. Is, that, is that the only piece left to... Get rid of. Yep, Mark? that's the, that's the only one. Where did the where did the empty uh, grass area go across from the blue side? Oh, that is Mark. That's Mark's right now. He, we, uh, yeah, that'll go with that the was, blue side. That will go with the. No, we that went with the original. All oh, did it? Yeah, everything. The first site we did when we did the blue sort. Uh, the oh, that's duplex, right, right, right. Yeah, we did that one too because there's nothing there. So, right. blue sort's the last one. That's so, it. So, Great Falls, Falls owns that lot. They own. They own. Uh, the parking lot? I don't know if they bought they bought the parking lot, uh, but I'm not sure if they bought that. I don't think they did anything with the small lot. Yeah, Mark's, Mark owns the grass lot. Yeah, Mark still owns that. Yeah. Make a nice parking spot for downtown. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We, we're going to need that, that's for sure. Um, we've met with uh, the fire station committee this afternoon. Um, it's been some challenges there. Um, I'll go into that uh, at another time when we get some things settled out, but um, some of the budget numbers uh, have gone up and uh, not real uh, happy about that, but we, we're looking to discuss that at more length with the architect and, and Landry and French. Um, water department, we have a meeting tomorrow with uh, the sewer department engineer and the sewer department along with the engineer uh, from Tish Bond that we work with, looking at how we're gonna make some changes and improvements there. Um, like I said in my report to you, um, the, uh, we were put on the top of the list for a $4 million uh, bond if we wanted to do that. Uh, and 22,000 of that would be a grant money which is not very yeah, much. Yeah, I don't like the but, um, zero, zero, five percent. But we are going to talk about what direction and what's the best direction for us to go to, to get uh, the manganese and iron out along with the disinfectant byproduct. So the gentleman that we have working with us, uh, Steve Parkinson from MRI, he has been a wealth of knowledge and information and he's has, uh, sitting in on this meeting and, and helping us uh, make some better decisions than I think we've made before. So that's encouraging. Um, otherwise, the staff is cranking out the budget numbers. We're supposed to have them all in. Some have, like the town clerk, got her numbers in early, as did James uh, and Public Works. So we're, uh, Lisa and I will be uh, setting up schedules to sit down <coughs> with you and start talking about our budget numbers. Is there going to be an increase in taxes, you think? I hope not. That's, my goal is not to have any increase. 
I've been, I've been telling Steve all along to tell the department heads to not to look for any huge purchases this yeah. year. You know, we've bought, you know, trucks and equipment and... Fire stations. Yeah, all, all kinds of things over, <laughs> over the last... Heating systems. Exactly so. Yeah, you know, the, the one big item that Steve's mentioned before is possibly looking at an elevator, you know. But. Yeah, we're not very uh, ADA compliant here, and the, the lift we have just is, doesn't work as well as it... Sometimes it doesn't work at all. So, uh, and, and even some, when it does work, I'm surprised it doesn't give anybody a heart attack that rides yeah. on it. People who have to get out of a wheelchair to get into that, just, it's not, you can't do it. And we've had that with our community dinner that the Legion put on. So yeah. we've uh, had Mike Lassell out doing some preliminary measuring and stuff and uh, w waiting to see what we have for funding, if I can have him do a little bit more. But uh, it's about a $250,000 expenditure, he said. But he's got some good ideas of where we could put it so it wouldn't disrupt everything here. Um, pretty creative guy. So we'll, we'll talk more about that during the budget process. Um, otherwise, um, that's what we're, where we are. People are busy everywhere. Um, I, just, I just want to add, you know, Steve mentioned uh, we had the meeting on the, the, the fire station as uh, the, the foundation has mostly been poured as if we're going to be pouring uh, two big walls tomorrow and that just leaves a little bit and then a couple uh, cross walls inside and uh, they ordered the steel and that should be delivered in the next couple of weeks to start doing that. Um, the mason should be on site in a couple of weeks to start working on the uh, training tower and some of the other masonry. and. Uh, Luckily, the weather hasn't been too terrible, so our, uh, our expenditures for the uh, uh, winter conditions has been minimal so far. So that's been good. But as uh, the super on the job, Brad, I, he seems like an excellent man. He knows what he's doing. And uh, you know, one of the reasons where, where we are as far as fighting the weather and everything is because of his preparation. His, yeah, he's... So, he comes out of a big company, national company, or international company. Um, he just moved into Kenny Bunk, and uh, he's, he's got, he just approaches things from a very incremental way. He, if he can't do this, then he's gonna do something else over here, and <coughs> he's, he's really helped move that project along. And, he, and he's been working with uh, Jen from the code enforcement, you know, making sure everything's done properly, so. Yeah. You've had a few blips here and there I'll talk about later, but <laughs> the other thing before we forget is as we, as part of the budget process, um, the police budget uh, contract is all settled. The um, Teamsters are meeting on Thursday, hopefully they'll agree to this last offer we've made and that will finish that. One of the things for us, we have to set, a, uh, if you want to do an increase for the non-union employees, I mean, and you probably need to set that tonight if you would. All right, now um, I was looking at 3%. Uh, CPI is around 2.3, 2.4, but the union uh, people are getting close to that. So it's up to you. It's something that you have to tell me what you want to set of that. Do you want to have that discussion now? We can. Yeah, they always, it's, it's not on the agenda, so. Well, what? And we, you can it, do it in executive session because we're talking about union contracts. But okay. If that's up to you, but you'll have to come out and vote. So. All right. Okay. And, that's all it. right. Anything else? Nope. All right. Yeah, Selectman's communications. As I had one thing from Comcast, I passed it on to the town manager. It doesn't really concern any of us. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I did receive the our report annual report from the Piscataqua Region Estuaries Partnership. I haven't had a chance to look at that yet, as, uh, but I'm sure that's going to be an interesting read. <coughs> um, that brings us to uh, accounts payables. We have a payroll warrant, 2025, from December 19th, 2019, for the amount of $97,101.57. We have a payroll warrant 2026 from December 26, 2019, the amount of $60,402.73. We 
We have a payroll warrant 2027 from January 2nd, 2020 for the amount of $58,335. Account payable warrant 2028 from January 9th, 2020 for the amount of $566,259.95. We have a water warrant, 028, from January 9th, 2020, for the amount of $16,037.88. We have a payroll warrant, 2028, from January 9th, 2020, for the amount of $68,109.84. Uh, account payable warrant, 2029. From January 16th, 2020, for the amount of $893,000, I'll get that one right, $893,426.13, there we go, shocked me that the number was so big, <laughs> payroll warrant, 2029 from January 16, 2020 for the amount of $55,924.46. Uh, make a motion, we'll pay our bills. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. That brings us to our new business in the personal property tax write-offs. We uh, had a... Uh, presented you with uh, the list of all the personal property uh, backdated. Uh, we had, uh, when Maureen was here, she had sent it off to the Thomas Agency. We had some luck, but not a lot. So uh, we discontinued working with them. Um, and we started by sending people registered letters, getting them to pony up. Some did, some didn't. Um, and uh, we sent the list off to our attorney to look at it and, and um, get her idea that if, if we should go to um, claim, you know, small claims court or should we just get involved in going after some of these people that have a pretty hefty amount owed. Can't you put a lien on it? We put on personal property, you put a UCC uh, uh, registry oh. at the state level. Okay. So, um, and that's what we're, we're doing with some of the bigger ones. Yep. Um, that has probably already been done. Uh, one of the things that she was able to find is that some of these companies have been sold. Um, so we have sent letters out to the new owner of the company and actually have received a response and they plan on paying them. Um, they just wanted to make sure they had all the right numbers and so we sent that off last week. But these small amounts and um, this is a list that uh, Lisa put together, Vargas, and the attorney feels that we should, uh, some of these people are just disappeared, the company's gone out of business, um, and she just feels we should just uh, write these off and get them off our books. So that's her recommendation. And you can see the list that she, uh, the recommendations. Any questions of Steve? No. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the uh, write-offs of the personal property tax as presented to us by the town manager and the uh, attorney. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
Thank you. That brings us to a revision of the personal use of town vehicles. Yeah, we we're gonna. I had an amendment that I uh, I was going to attach, uh, and we can't. We weren't able to. Uh, it was a PDF. Just and it's a very old policy. And Patty and I talked a little bit more about it today. And uh, I don't think we need to act on this. We're just going to rewrite the whole the whole thing, the whole policy, the whole and policy. We'll update it. Update it. Uh, so you, you don't have a redundancy for each department. Um, but we thought we should have something in there um, just because now the code enforcement officer has a vehicle and she needs to have some guidelines. But we, I, I want to really make sure everybody has as much of the similar guidelines as, as uh, now, that is, is we've talked earlier, and uh, no, I mentioned a couple of other selectmen that um, could you just uh, you know, explain the use of the car in the uh, code enforcement office? Well, the code enforcement office uh, has gotten a lot busier over the last few years, and um, people have always used their personal vehicle. Uh, and believe it or not, we, they put on a lot of miles, and it just the paperwork and stuff goes through it. So, um, we thought we would uh, utilize one of the police cars that we were trading in because we don't get very much money on the trade-ins. They have over 100,000 miles. They, um, they don't have a, a lot of value to, for a trade. So uh, this particular vehicle is, a, is one of the police cars that we had planned to trade in. We didn't, we kept it. Um, and we're gonna let the code enforcement officer use it. Uh, she uses it just for work. She takes it home with her, um, and she lives right here in town. Um, and she's out and about. Like she's my, uh, she doesn't normally work on a Friday, but she has been going out on Fridays to go on site over here to do inspections. And and other uh, contractors appreciate the fact that they can just give her a call, and she can just come out and and look at whatever it is that she has to do. So I, I think it was a, a good move on our end. We didn't have to buy a car. Or and uh, she can gas up at the pumps up here, and when we finally get those back in, so uh, a lot of people thought because it looks so nice that it was a new car. It's not a new car; it's four or five years old, and and been well used. So, and it, the police department they do take good care of their vehicles. I know that. Um, so um, I think it's just to explain why uh, there have been some questions about that, but. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, we have no quick claim deeds or installment contracts. Oh. Uh, that brings us to our abatements. And we have Paul here. Yeah. Good evening, Paul McKinney. Um, we, we only have three tonight, which is not, not too bad. Um, I've got a little bit of a different format that we've set up. So I got the, um, the abatement decision sheet here that's got all the critical information, the value of the building. The reduction amount, the amount in taxes that's being reduced, and then the cover letter, which is basically my recommendation or the assessing's recommendation. So, um, the first one uh, that we need to uh, look at is uh, tax map 42, lot 34, 110 Old Sanford Road, owned by the Burke Sportsman Association. Um, somehow, during the course of the revaluation, we changed the um, land use code on this property to make it a taxable property. They have filed uh, previously for a number of years in the past for a, um, a charitable organization. Um, so we felt that it was um, at this point in time, um, uh, we're recommending that we grant that exemption again to make them tax exempt. They, um, they don't use the property a whole lot, but they do have it is open to the public, I guess, if people want to go out there and use the range or whatever uh, that's up there. The building's in pretty poor shape. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Needless it is. to say. But it, was, it was in pretty poor shape when I took my hunting license there yeah, 40 yeah, years so ago. <laughs> I, I guess they don't, you know, the, the old timers, I guess, have left. But, yeah, there's um, a couple of them left. There's still a it couple is, left. Um, right. I can give a little bit of a history on that. I think it was in, in 1995 is uh, the sportsmen came to the town at that time and uh, you know the 
at that time there was only a few people involved and uh, you know they were granted that tax exempt status at that right. time is because you know it's, it's out in the heath it's not really valuable property yeah. so is uh, that's why it you know was put there it in the original the prop yeah so so we're recommending that we um, mm. abate the $91,000 in taxes, which is a um, tax bill of $1,595.23. Uh, so we recommend that that be granted. <clears throat> Any questions or anything? I can. No. No. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Thank you. All right. The second one is uh, map R45, lot 39A2, 58 Knox Lane. Uh, it's a, this is a uh, oversized two-car garage uh, with a two-bedroom apartment on the second floor. Uh, the property owner, when he looked at his property card, noted some errors. Uh, we went out and did an inspection of the property, found that a portion of the garage had been mislabeled as living space, um, and we had an extra bathroom count few other minor things because we never got into the property when we did the reevaluation. So in correcting those areas, um, it reduced the value, um, let's see, where am I? Reduced the value from 290,100 to 230,500, which is a $59,600 reduction. Uh, we request that you abate them $1,044.79. So moved. Second. 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 Is there any discussion? Good. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, the uh, last one is a uh, is map U4, lot 52, 15 Rochester Street. This is a three-family unit apartment building uh, that was only inspected from the street during the reevaluation. The uh, owner felt that it was being overvalued uh, because of the um, exterior and the interior repairs that was needed. We did an inspection of the property, uh, made some corrections with the grade and the condition of the property, and uh, also the, um, the finished living space that was actually there. So that reducing the value from 396800 to 334200 a reduction of 62600 and a we're recommending that a tax abatement be issued in the amount of one thousand ninety-seven dollars and thirty-eight cents. Any discussion? We have a motion. So moved. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. Time with income properties. Mm -hmm. Just um, it's in pretty bad. <laughs> it, it was a condition of the property. I mean, well, I, I completely. Yeah. I completely. It's. Uh, I, I agree. But, your recommendation, but yeah. you know. Uh, and I know the property. You, Paul, so I'm, I'm uh, not, I know the property too. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank right. you. Um, is, every, is this new format? I mean, does everyone like this? You think this is more? I like it. You like it better? Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. easier to read. It's okay. easier to read. Certainly. All right. Anything, anytime you have a suggestion or you need something explained, please, you know, let me know, and we'll around. certainly, you know, try to make it work. Sure. Uh, we haven't had many, considering the reevaluations, we've had, um, I think, about 15 or so abatements, which is and we went quite a few the last time I was here. But that's really a pretty small number for um, for the value change that we had, and they have until probably the middle of February or so to apply. So I do expect, you know, we'll get probably another dozen or so before that date. But uh, it's, everything's gone went pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with that. Thank you, Paul. Right? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, we have no public for the second public cut comment is um, <clears throat> the executive session we have do we have any other business and non-agenda items nope um, you said we're going to have to come back for a vote a vote yeah if I can take, take take the minutes so you can go home is, um, I had a schedule <laughs> um, and you said we're not going to do the labor 
Well, we well, should we have to discuss that. That's yeah, correct. Right. We need so, to discuss that. All right. So. Um, I'm going to you know, make a motion. We enter into executive session under Title I, subsection 4056D, discussion of labor contracts, and Title I, subsection 4056C, acquisition of real estate property. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. And we will be coming back in to do business afterwards. <laughs>
Uh, one item to take care of a business before we close out um, is uh, the, concerning the raises for the non-union employees is uh, the town manager is, uh, is uh, recommending a 3% increase for one year. So moved. Is, Second. Second. Um, is as my uh, wife worked for the town, I am going to recuse myself. And I need to recuse myself also for the so, same reason. As I can call the vote, all those in favor? Those that recuse themselves. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other business that anybody needs to bring up? We have one motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you, everybody.